Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, guess what, I've got uh, interactive brokers running on Linux. This is the TWS, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I've done a video before, uh, a few years ago, on how to do or run interactive brokers TWS on Linux uh, with Java and uh, connect it with R. Now this is more up to date. I'm not using R anymore, I'm using MATLAB, but um, part of my dilemma is trying to find a way to execute interactive brokers on non-Windows technologies, because uh, as you know, I've struggled with it, latency, security, all that stuff. So we can now, moving forward, pretty well use Linux with interactive brokers, TWS, for Java. Now there's another option with the POSIX C compiler or C++ I believe as well. Uh, if you have been following me with Ivan, he was saying that the POSIX C version is very messy and ugly, not to be recommended. So this is why we use Java. Okay, enough blabbing. And right now, uh, let me just show you what we have. We have, uh, I put it together a bunch of instructions. I'm going to go through each and every step here and uh, sort of detail it out video by, or video, step by step, video by video. All right, so let's go to uh, the very first step here. Uh, download TWS and follow the executing instructions at the end. Configure for API socket and add localhost not just 1277. So what I mean by that is uh, if you go to, uh, let's pull up the uh, URL here, work on two monitors. Okay, hopefully, uh, let me just put a new one in here. Okay, so if I'm gonna go to that URL, that link, what we're doing here is we're using the Unix download and it is compatible supposedly with Mac as well. I can't confirm that because I don't own Mac. At least with Mac or Linux, it does work. So you'll see here we have an API version and a non-API. This is the API version on the left. Uh, it says here the uh, TWS does not support API connection. So we want the one that supports API. Download it, right on. Okay, so when you download it, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna follow these instructions. You're gonna get uh, Actually, this jar file, you run that in a terminal. Uh, and once you extract the jar file, which is XXF, that's what it does, you cd to the IBJTS, and then you exactly run this command, okay? Do you want me to go through that? Probably be better, right? So here's TWS running in my Linux environment. Okay, I'm gonna going to uh, exit. So for anybody that needs to, the best way I find to execute a in Ubuntu is come under here and just type in term to find it and execute your terminal. Pretty simple stuff. Um, so here I have got already a bunch of uh, terminals open. I'm just going to look for the right one that uh, will run my TWS. So this is the one I'm, I'm referring to. So exactly this command as you see here. Uh, let me just rewind here. Okay. So essentially when you download the file, this is what you get. So you tar, or sorry, you jar and extract this jar file as instructed. Uh, as instructed here. And then you will cd, change directory to what's there. So let me go to that terminal session here, and All right, so we are moving to the IBJJTS, right? So here's the exact uh, jar file that we're gonna run. These are the running instructions that you need. Kind of wonky, I know. I'm not going to go into each one and how, how it works, but um, you can just run it this way. Okay, it's going to run. It's going to load up the uh, the TWS. So 
what you got to do is you're going to use the demo account. You can obviously use your real account. Just type in e demo, demo users and password, all lowercase. Loads are up. You can see what's happening in the Java or the console here. Um, but it'll load up. Okay. So as I said, now these are important right here. Uh, if you don't follow this exactly here, you won't be able to run from within your job code. So let me just show you what we're going to do. So essentially, we're going to configure the TWS to accept API sockets from our Java test client. And we're going to add these guys to uh, the IP addresses that TWS will accept. You can also spin it over a network, obviously, and whatnot. Now, the more recent versions of TWS, not worry about this stuff. Okay, under here you'll see two different modes. You have Mosaic, which is this newer one uh, that Interactive Brokers is probably trying to include. So that's including the Linux version. Then we have the classic TWS workspace. That's the one we want to work with. We can't do that unless we configure the setting. Now remember what I said. Come under here under API. Come under settings. Now uh, you want to enable ActiveX, we don't worry about ActiveX, but we want to enable the socket client. That's for a Java uh, test client to connect into TWS. Now here's the thing. I don't think you need this IP 127001. That's the same as localhost, but you have to literally put in localhost. I'll show you why in a minute. If you don't do that, it won't connect. Okay. So everything's ready to go on the TWS side. So, we've gone through a number of steps here. Um, I've shown you how to configure the API settings. We just did that. I've shown you how to run the exact Java command and configurations that you need to run the Java with the Java jar file. Uh, I've talked about how do you log in, use the e-demo, user ID, and password demo user. All right, so now we're going to move into this section here on how to configure uh, to get to get our Java running within the uh, Java and that means for the IDE, the integrated development environment and all that. So let's go to that uh, URL I just entered. Alright, so here we are. We're going to now uh, download the uh, oh, no. Yeah, we just did that. Yeah, I think I messed up here. Um, okay, yeah, we just ran these instructions. Um, so now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to try to configure our our TWS uh, for the API, the Interactive Brokers API. So let me just copy this. Uh, all right. So. Here we are in that PDF. This is the PDF that will show you how to get starting with the TWS Java API. This does work. So what we're going to do, I would strongly recommend you read the entire document, um, but just for uh, quick and dirty ways to get access to it, we are jumping to, I think we want 27 here, hang on. We want uh, 27, 28. All right, so let me just get to page 27. Yeah, here it is. This is what we want, chapter five. So what we're going to do is make sure you 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 download and you get your uh, IDE running. Now remember, this is the internet. Beans uh, integrated development environment. In my case, I'm using the latest um, NetBeans 8.02. I tried to run this with uh, 7.01 as well. Uh, it didn't work at all uh, on how I wanted it. So install the NetBeans uh, as well. Uh, let me just see if I can get that work, showing that to you. Uh, hang on here. Just uh, load up the right terminal that's got the net beans right here. I believe that's what we want. Okay, um, if you come under um, under uh, net beans, let me just 
just see here. Okay, what you could do is just do a Google search for NetBeans download. I prefer NetBeans, so I just come under here. Uh, I downloaded the Enterprise Edition uh, and just download it. Now, when you run it, um, let's see if I can show you where that fun stuff happened here. Let me just show you. Okay, so it's going to download it to your downloads directory. Um, in this case, I got it right here. There's a couple of tricks, unless you're new to Linux, uh, you need to know about. Um, uh, let's see, okay. Okay, let me just, uh, I'll even go here. Okay, so I'm in my, in my uh, downloads directory. So that's where I'm, I'm in right now, under my home, user, caustic, and then downloads, as you'll see. So you're, by default, your NetBean should get executed or should be downloaded to this folder, downloads, obviously. Now sometimes uh, your NetBeans may not, it's a shell script that you're gonna run. Sometimes uh, the shell script may not show up, it'll just, you know, show up as a regular file, but you need to make it executable so you can run it. Now, the way to do that is go chmod, change mod, plus, and in my case, I just go write access, executable access, and then the name of the file, just like that, okay? You can tell that by doing this, ls minus l, and you can see that it's got read write access with the executable, okay? So, what you typically do is type in like this, net, beans, Okay, period, slash, and then the name of the script, which is sh the shell script that is. Option runs, it'll look for all the JVM. So you gotta make sure you have your JVM, Java, all installed as well. And then from there, uh, you can start running the, uh, the installer. But what will happen is it's gonna put it into a default location. And where that default location is, let me just show you again. Let me pull up that document, the instructions here. All right. So, like I said, I'm using the latest uh, NetBeans 8.01. It's gonna. I've installed into the default location. Now, if you have problems finding it, you just run this in your uh, in your um, in your uh, terminal, and you should be able to find it. So we're looking for NetBeans, the executable. And of course, oh. and off and she goes. So now you know it's under your home, your home under NetBeans. So there's different ways to run it. Kind of hokey. I know I'm not a, I am not a, uh, a uh, Linux expert here, but. Go change directory, and then your little squiggly, that's your default home path. So if you go under NetBeans here, you can see I have both versions 7.0 and 8.01. So as I said, I'm using uh, 8.01. Uh, no. uh, let's see, where am I? I always get confused with these things. Uh, NetBeans. Uh, and then, as stupid as this may look, <laughs> I'll just uh, go right into the uh, bin directory and just run NetBeans. I could probably run some configuration file or some kind of shell script, but whatever. You just type in NetBeans, uh, and then that's it. And then that should run. So now once you get it running, need to do a number of things. Now, of course, that brings us back to our PDF, uh, as I have hinted at. Now, this uh, PDF that I am referring to is 
very important, as I said on page 27. So we need to set up our test client for Java to connect into Java. Oh, um, before I forget, when you're installing the API, um, which this, this document will walk you through on how to do it, you need to pay attention that uh, you don't have TWS running when you install the API, okay? So you need to follow those instructions. But now we're skipping all that for now. And we're going to start running the uh, Java test client. Very important. Now we have our Java client. So what we got to do is set up the Java client. So create a new project. Make it a Java project, Java application, give it a name. Um, and then what we do are we click on finish, go through the next, finished, all that stuff. Uh, the important part is, is this. You need to ensure that you add in, within the project of your NetBeans, these uh, uh, folders or directories, these two right here. Very critical, let me show you how that looks. If you come under here, and once you get your project created, you come under properties, and what you need to do is you need to add those folders. I just uh, hinted at. In my case, we're dealing with this. The home documents, IBD, JTS, samples, Java, API demo, and this one. So just click on add folder and navigate to, to both of these in order for it to run, okay? So again, it's home caustic, documents, IBJ, uh, IBJ, DTS, source, Java, client, com. Again, that is these guys right here, these two, okay? Again, this will walk you through it. It's not that difficult. And wherever you download your, um, API. Uh, I think I've downloaded it somewhere here. But uh, yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. Okay? Just want to make sure people get that. These are the gotchas you got to be careful of. Okay. So you should be able to run your uh, applications now or your client. So within your uh, source files, there's a bunch here. So remember, you got to have your interactive brokers, TWS, running for this test client, the Java test client to connect into, okay? Remember, you got to make sure you also configure everything right here on your API, enable the socket client, because that's what we need. And here, as I mentioned, make sure you enter in local host literally, okay? I'm going to show you in the code why. Let me just show you that this does run. Uh, so just right click on API demo, uh, run file, and it should build it automatically. So there you go. Um, it is running. You connect. Oh, so here you go localhost. Okay. So that's why you need in your your, your configuration the trust the API address that TWS will accept is localhost. So that's how it's connected. Um, so we connect, we already connected, so we can probably do some little market data, I don't know, IBM, uh, just top market data, request top market, there you go. Um, historical data, request historical data. But it seems to be running just fine. And there's no errors being generated. Um, so everything looks good. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we got the TWS running on Linux uh, using Java, again, on Linux to connect into. So by definition, we have removed Windows and all Microsoft technologies now. With this in mind, because we're using Java, we can use this and should be able to use it on, both on Linux, in this case Ubuntu, uh, do the same thing with Mac, OS X, as well as Windows. Okay, so we got this all running. Happy days are here. Hopefully I'll help you out and may the force be with you.